Welcome students. Today our topic is amino acids. Every living cell contains proteins. Indeed, they are the most abundant macromolecules in living cells. Proteins also occur in great diversity. Thousands of different kinds may be found in a single cell. Moreover, proteins exhibit great diversity in their biological function. In animals, they help to form supporting and protective structures such as cartilage, skin, nail, hair, and muscle. They are the major constituents of enzymes and hormones in all organisms. The name protein comes from the Greek word protos, which means first or foremost. While plants are able to utilize inorganic sources of nitrogen such as ammonia, nitrates and nitrites, man and other animals are for the most part dependent on a source of amino acids to build their body proteins. All proteins, whether from the most ancient line of bacteria or from the most complex forms of life, are polymers of amino acids, with each amino acid residue joined to its neighbor by a specific type of covalent bond. The term residue reflects the loss of the elements of water when one amino acid is joined to another. Proteins can be reduced to their constituents amino acids by a variety of methods. And the earliest studies of proteins naturally focused on the free amino acids derived from them. 20 different amino acids are commonly found in proteins. The first amino acid to be discovered in protein was asparagine in 1806. The last of the 20 to be found, threonine, was not identified until 1938. All the amino acids have trivial or common names, in some cases derived from the source from which they were first isolated. Asparagine was first found in asparagus, glutamate from wheat gluten, tyrosine from cheese, as in Greek, tyro stands for cheese, and glycine was so named because of its sweet taste. Amino acids have common structural features. The naturally occurring amino acids have a common structure. Amino acids, as the name implies, have two functional groups, an amino group that's NH2 and a carboxyl group that's CWH. These groups are joined to a single that is aliphatic carbon. In organic chemistry, the carbon directly attached to a carboxyl group is the alpha position. So the amino acids in proteins are all alpha amino acids. The side chains that distinguish one amino acid from another are attached to the alpha carbon. So the structures are often written as, in the simplest case, R is equal to H, amino acetic acid or glycine. In other amino acids, R is an aliphatic, aromatic or heterocyclic residue and may incorporate other functional groups which vary in structure, size and electric charge and which influence the solubility of the amino acids in water. In addition to these 20 amino acids, there are many less common ones which are not present as constituents of the proteins in living organisms. The common amino acids of proteins have been assigned three letter abbreviations and one letter symbol, which are used as shorthand to indicate the composition and sequence of amino acids polymerized in proteins. For example, alanine, the three letter is ALA and the symbol A, arginine, ARG and the symbol R, asparagine, ASN and the symbol N. Aspartic acid ASP and the symbol D is used. Cysteine CYS and the symbol C. Glutamic acid GLU and the symbol E is used for it. Similarly, glutamine GLN and the symbol Q is used. Glycine GLY and we use G for it. Histidine, HIS, and the symbol H is used for it. Isoleucine, 
I L E and the symbol is I. Similarly, leucine, it's L E U and the symbol is L. Lysine, L Y S and the symbol is R. Methionine, it's M E T and the symbol is M. Phenylalanine, it's P H E and the symbol is F. Proline, it's P R O and the symbol is P. Serine, it is S E R and the symbol is S. Tryptophan, it's T R P and the symbol is W. Tyrosine, it's T Y R and the symbol is Y. And valine, it's V A L and the symbol is V. And lastly, threonine, it's T H R and the symbol is T. Two conventions are used to identify the carbons in an amino acid. The additional carbons in an R group are commonly designated as alpha, beta, gamma, delta, eta, and so forth, proceeding out from the alpha carbon. For most other organic molecules, carbon atoms are simply numbered from one end, giving highest priority to the carbon with a substituent containing the atom of highest atomic number. Within the later conventions, the carboxyl carbon of amino acid would be C1 and the alpha carbon would be C2. In some cases, such as amino acids with heterocyclic R groups, the Greek lettering system is ambiguous and the numbering convention is used. Now, amino acid colority. Amino acids, except for glycine, have a chiral carbon atom. That is, alpha carbon is bounded to four different groups, a carboxyl group, an amino group, an R group, and a hydrogen atom. In glycine, the R group is another hydrogen atom. The alpha carbon is thus a chiral center. Because of the tetrahedral arrangement of the bonding orbitals around the alpha carbon atom, the four different groups can occupy two unique special arrangements and thus amino acids have two possible stereoisomers. Since they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, the two forms represent a class of stereoisomers called enantiomers. All molecules with a chiral center are also optically active, that is they rotate plane polarized light with the direction of rotation differing for different stereoisomers. The classification and naming of stereoisomers is based on absolute configuration of the four substituents of the asymmetric carbon atom. For this purpose, a reference compound, the three carbon sugar, that is glyceraldehyde, has been chosen, to which all other optically active compounds are compared. Glyceraldehyde is the smallest sugar to have an asymmetric carbon atom. The naming of its configuration is established by X-ray diffraction analysis. The stereoisomers of all chiral compounds having a configuration related to that of L-glyceraldehyde are referred as L, that is for level rotatory meaning left and the stereoisomers related to D-glyceraldehyde are designated as D. The D comes from dextrorotatory means right. The amino acids found in proteins are L-alpha amino acids. D amino acids are not naturally found in proteins and are not involved in the metabolic pathways of eukaryotic organisms although they are important in the structure and metabolism of bacteria. For example, D-glutamic acid and D-analine are structural components of certain bacterial cell walls. Similarly, some peptide antibiotics such as bacitracin also contain D-amino acids. All amino acids found in proteins occur in the L configuration about the chiral carbon atom. For example, let me take a look at stereo representation of the serine. Isoleucine, threonine and 4-hydroxyproline have two asymmetric carbon atoms. Thus, each has four isomers. Amino acids can be classified by R groups. 
While there are several methods of categorizing them, one of the most common is to group them according to the nature of their side chains, that's R groups, particularly their polarity, distribution of electric charge, or tendency to interact with water at biological pH. The polarity of the R groups varies widely from totally non-polar or hydrophobic that's water insoluble to highly polar or hydrophilic that's water soluble. There are three main classes of amino acids. First, non-polar side chains. The R groups of these amino acids have either aliphatic or aromatic groups. Glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, and proline have aliphatic R groups. Proline is unique, the cyclic amino acid, among these amino acids. It has four carbons with the alpha amino group bounded not only to the alpha carbon but also to the last side chain carbon. The cyclic side chain means that proline is conformationally rigid. That is, the carbon-carbon bonds of proline do not rotate in solution. Other amino acids are more flexible in solution. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan have aromatic R groups. Now next, polar uncharged side chains. The R groups of these amino acids are more soluble in water or hydrophilic than those of non-polar amino acids because they contain functional groups that form hydrogen bonds with water. This class of amino acids include serine, threonine, cysteine, methionine, asparagine, and glutamine. The polarity of serine and threonine is contributed by their hydroxyl groups, that of cysteine and methionine by their sulfur atoms, and asparagine and glutamate by their amide groups. Now, charged side chains. These include amino acids with negatively charged, that's acidic R groups, and amino acids with positively charged, that's basic R groups. The former group includes aspartate and glutamate, each with a second carboxyl group. The later includes lysine, arginine, and histidine. Now, uncommon amino acids. In addition to the 20 common amino acids, proteins may contain residues created by modification of common residues already incorporated into a polypeptide. Among these uncommon amino acids are 4-hydroxyproline, a derivative of proline, and 5-hydroxylysine derived from lysine. The former is found in plant cell wall proteins and both are found in collagen, a fibrous protein of connective tissues. 6-N-methylysine is a constituent of myosin, a contractile protein of muscle. Another important uncommon amino acid is gamma carboxyglutamate, found in the blood clotting protein, prothrombin, and in certain other proteins that bind calcium as part of their biological function. More complex is desmosine, a derivative of four lysine residues, which is found in the fibrous protein elastin. Selenocysteine is a typical case. This rare amino acid residue is introduced during protein synthesis rather than created through post-synthetic modification. It contains selenium rather than the sulfur of cysteine. Actually derived from serine, selenocysteine is the constituent of just a few known proteins. Some 300 additional amino acids have been found in cells. They have a variety of functions but are not constituents of proteins. Ornithine and struline derived a special note because they are key intermediates that metabolites in the biosynthesis of arginine and in the urea cycle. Based on their nutritional or physiological roles, amino acids can be differentiated as first, essential amino acids. Eight of the amino acids are designated as essential amino acids. These are valine, leucine, isoleucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, methionine, threonine, and histidine. 
These amino acids cannot be synthesized by humans in adequate amounts to sustain growth and health and must be supplied by the diet. Second, non-essential amino acids. These are also necessary for health but can be synthesized by humans from other amino acids and nitrogenous compounds. These include glycine, alanine, proline, serine, cysteine, tyrosine, asparagine, glutamine, aspartic acid, and glutamic acid. Now, semi-essential amino acids. These are essentials for infants, for example, lysine and arginine. Now, properties of amino acids. Amino acids are colorless crystalline solids, water-soluble high melting solids, and behave like salts. Amino acids can act as acids and base. The carboxyl and amino groups of the amino acids can respectively donate a proton to and accept a proton from water. This exchange happens simultaneously in solutions so that the amino acids form doubly ionized species, terms zwitter ions. From Greek, zwitter meaning hybrid ion in solution in the form as. The zwitter ions are dipolar. When the proteins are present in an aqueous solution, the carboxyl group can lose a proton and amino group can accept a proton, giving rise to a dipolar ion, which is neutral but has both positive and negative charge. Now UV absorption. Amino acids such as phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan absorb in the UV range of the spectrum with absorption maxima at 200 to 230 nm and 230 to 290 nm. Dissociation of the phenolic, that is, HO group of tyrosine, shifts the absorption curve by about 20 nm towards longer wavelength. Absorption readings at 280 nm are used for the determination of proteins and peptides. Histidine, cysteine, and methionine absorb between 200 and 210 nm. Reaction of amino acid at high temperatures. The complex and subtle configuration of a protein can be readily changed by heat treatment. A given protein in solution can be converted to a gel or precipitate. This happens to egg white when it is coagulated by heat. Or the process can be reversed. A precipitate transformed to a gel or solution as in the case of dissolved animal hooves with acids or alkali to make glue. Similarly, when meat is heated, the protein chain shrink and so steak shrinks on cooling. When milk is coagulated by acid and heat, protein precipitates forming cheese and curd. These changes in food proteins are easily recognized in practice. It is well established that heat treatment can alter the nutritive value of a protein. The chemical change that take place on heating have been investigated in both isolated protein systems and in foods. In one such experiment system, while amino acid and glucose were used, there was a progressive loss of histidine, arginine, valine, and leucine. The same type of reaction has been observed in numerous protein carbohydrate systems as well as in many foods. For example, evaporated milk has a lower nutritive value when measured by rat growth than fresh whole milk. And if the evaporated milk has been subjected to heating before feeding, it suffers further loss in value proportion to the extent and amount of heating. It has been demonstrated that reaction occurs through the amino groups of the protein since if these groups are acylated and rendered unavailable for reaction, the protein loses its power to bind carbohydrates. Not only has it been shown in some studies that amino acids are destroyed, but the protein also becomes resistant to hydrolysis by some proteases. For example, heat ingestion or wheat gluten with glucose causes resistance to hydrolysis of the protein by trypsin or papine and to a less marked degree by pepsin, chymotrypsin or 
pancreatine which contains a mixture of proteases. Reactions at elevated temperatures are important during the preparation of food. Frying, boiling and baking develop the typical aroma of many foods in which amino acids participate as precursors. Studies with food and model systems have shown that the characteristic odorants are formed through the Maillard reaction and that they are subsequent products, in particular of cysteine, methionine, ornithine and proline. Now formation of acrylamide, that is the toxic compound, acrylamide is one of the volatile compounds formed during the heating of food. Model experiments have shown that it is produced in reactions of asparagine with reductive carbohydrates or from the resulting cleavage products. The formation is promoted by temperatures greater than 100 degree centigrade and or longer reaction times. Indeed, model experiments have shown that the highest yields based on asparagine are cysteine and methionine also form acrylamide in the presence of glucose, but the yields are considerably lower than from asparagine. The thermal reaction of acrolein with ammonia also produce acrylamide, but again only in small amounts. Now mutagenic heterocyclic compounds. In the late 1970s, it was shown that charred surface portions of barbecued fish and meat as well as the smoke condensate captured in barbecuing have a highly mutagenic effect in microbial tests. In model tests, it could be demonstrated that pyrrolates of amino acids and proteins are responsible for that effect. The mutagenic compounds isolated from amino acid pyrrolysates are pyridoindoles, pyridoamidazoles, and tetraazafluoroanthines. At the same time, it was found that mutagenic compounds of amino acids and proteins can also be formed at lower temperatures. The compound like 2-amino, 3-methyl, amidazole, quinozaline, and 2-amino, 3,8-dimethyl, amidazole, quinozaline were obtained from meat extract deep fried meat, grilled fish and heated model mixtures on the basis of creatine and amino acid, glycine, alanine, threonine and glucose. A model experiment directed at processes in meat shows that heterocyclic amines are detectable at temperatures around 175 degrees centigrade only after 5 minutes. It is assumed that they are formed from creatinine. Subsequent products of the Millard reaction that is pyridines, pyrazines and amino acids. At the same time it was found that many mutagenic compounds of amino acids and proteins can also be formed at lower temperatures. Synthetic amino acids and their use for increasing the biological value of food. That is food fortification. Amino acids, peptides and proteins are important constituents of food. They supply the required building blocks for biosynthesis. Since food is not available in sufficient quantity or quality in many parts of the world, the chemical industry has up to known been highly successful in raising the quantity as well as quality of proteins for increasing its biological value by supplementation with essential amino acids. Illuminating examples are rice fortification with L-lysine and L-threonine, supplementation of bread with L-lysine and fortification of soya and peanut protein with methionine. Synthetic amino acids are used also for chemically defined diets which can be completely absorbed and utilized for nutritional purposes in space travel in pre and post operative states and during therapy for maldigestion and malabsorption syndromes. The fortification of animal feed with amino acids is of great significance. These demands have resulted in increased production of amino acids. With this, we conclude today's topic. 
wherein we study the structure and function of different amino acids and the role played by the amino acids in building the proteins and as intermediates in metabolism. Thank you.